welcome to the Fly Kingfisher Winning Post. I'm your host and guide Mohit Lalvani on India's most important horse racing show. Well, I'm at the Mahalakshmi Racecourse to bring you all the action from, well, one of the most important events in December. In fact, it tells us that Christmas is around the corner because it is the Indo-German Mumbai Christmas Fest. The Mahalakshmi race course came alive in the first weekend of December in what has become one of the best race days in the country. The Indo-German Chamber of Commerce Mumbai Christmas Fest was conceptualized six years ago and is now a part of horse racing tradition in the city. Well, it is now the sixth Christmas market that we are organizing and it is actually the seventh year of racing that we have because we started in 2006 in January on the occasion of the 50th anniversary of the Indo-German Chamber of Commerce. And every year we're going from strength to strength. Every year we have something new. Like this year, for instance, at the Christmas market, we have the skating uh, area, which is very unusual. It's not ice, but plastic, but still it works as if it is ice. The guests are enjoying it very, very much. We have a good response with the sponsors and we have beautiful weather. What more do you need? The mission is to improve trade and investment between India and Germany. And this mission, of course, also needs promotion of India and Germany in general. And this is what we're doing here at the Bombay Racecourse every year with the Christmas market. And obviously the people like it, they come here. This event serves a number of different objectives. Apart from the fact that every race on the card is a sponsored one, it brings together an opportunity at many levels of commerce between Germany and India. It's tremendous. We had about 150 businessmen from uh, Mumbai together to talk about investment possibilities in Germany. It's an extraordinary event. We are very grateful. Well, I, I think we have to show our friends in India that we really are chasing them to come to my country and we are really uh, promoting Germany as a, as a hub for the whole of Europe. We are not doing it just for ourselves. We want India to be more present on the European continent and uh, Indian, Indian companies are terrific partners. German companies have known that for more than a hundred years because they have been here for such a long time. You know, uh, trade structures have changed. Trade used to be one sends a package and the other buys it abroad. Trade today is mostly, to a very high degree, intercompany trade. So, German Siemens sends products to India Siemens. Yeah? In this way, it's about 70% of international trade is done within the same companies. Yeah? So that is why it is so important that we get more and more investment from both sides to the other country because that will increase our trade again. So it is not only an isolated movement to get more uh, uh, investment, it will have an impact, a positive impact also on trade so that we get a much broader basis in the end of the day. You have to show a certain um, insistency to come to a success. German Trade and Invest has done this now three times uh, and at a regular space. And that is now showing the first results. Last year, when this happened for the first time, there were uh, less people here. And in February, we, we, they did it, or we did together in Pune, it was already a little bit more. And now for the third time, it's even more. And I think we are going uphill. We have a, a degree of success which is measurable. A familiar face at the fest is Peter Doibert from the Chamber though this year his role is slightly different as he promotes Hamburg as a business destination. Well, uh, since, the, since November, the 11th of November, we have a representation, a Hamburg representation in India sitting in, in Mumbai. There are three partners in the, the representation. One is the Senate in Hamburg, and then we have Hafen Hamburg, which is the port of Hamburg marketing, and we have the Chamber of Commerce in Hamburg, and these are the three uh, partners. And, uh, we are basically there to, to help companies from Hamburg and Northern Germany to establish a presence in India, but also to help uh, Indians settle, who want to settle or invest or, or travel or whatever business they would like to do in, in Northern Germany, especially in Hamburg, to help them as well. 
Well, actually, it is a little different, and I'm very happy about that because I mean, I come from Hamburg, and I love the city. I think it's the nicest city in uh, in Germany. And you see, there's everywhere are Hamburg signs today at the race course. We had this Hamburg film running, which could see that it's such a lovely city with with the with the lakes and uh, the, the the buildings. It's just uh, marvelous, such a such a green city. So we have a little bit of Hamburg today in uh, in Mumbai, and that makes me even more happy. Not only in the German Chamber and and our partners, but this time Hamburg is there, and we are having a Hamburg race, the Hamburg Trophy. I think it's a great atmosphere here today, and. Uh, uh, a lot of people are here. Uh, we have this event every year, but I think this year uh, it's, uh, it's, it's especially well received by all the people of Mumbai. And uh, I'm very happy and very proud that the city of Hamburg is represented on this event uh, for, for the first time in this style. And of course this happens because now there is an official representation for the city of Hamburg in Mumbai. Well, it's time for a short break here on the Fly Kingfisher winning post, but don't go anywhere because there's plenty of more action on the Fly Kingfisher winning post. And from the Mumbai Christmas Fest, we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Fly Kingfisher winning post, and it's all happening here at the Mahalakshmi Race Course. Without wasting any time, let's move on and find out more about what happened at the Mumbai Christmas Fest. The success of this event is evident and corporate sponsors are the first to see that. Well, we've been associated now with the Indo-German Chamber of Commerce uh, since last year, where we also attended and we felt it was an excellent branding event for us and some great days here with good clients, suppliers and staff. We're really enjoying it. DSB, we're an um, international uh, logistics and freight forwarding company uh, based out of uh, Copenhagen, Denmark. We've been here now for a little over five years and uh, have had a great success in India and look forward to doing that again in the future. The Indo-German Chamber of Commerce Mumbai Christmas Fest is more than just a business event or a sport. It is an endeavor with a heart. It's giving a high profile to the work that we do with the children. There's a lot of networking opportunities with the main people within the businesses. And for an NGO to operate these days, there needs to be the connection with a business, with the community. So the corporate social responsibility can be very, very important on both sides. Magic Bus is a sport for development charity that was established by Matthew Spacey in 1999. And it works with marginalised children through using sports as a development uh, vehicle. So if you go into one of the communities or slums in India, if you throw a football in the air, you'll get hundreds of children around you. So the immediate attraction of that type of sport to engage in young children is vital. But then what Magic Bus does, it has a, a, a program over many years developing those children to use the techniques of coaching and mentoring. Um, they then return back to their communities and work with those tools to actually improve uh, the operations of the, the people around them as well as themselves. Each year, the city of Mumbai marks its calendar with this event as one that leaves everybody with a reason to visit the Mahalakshmi race course. Well, and this event truly gets bigger and better each year. On that note, we'll take a short break here on the Fly King Fisher winning course. And when we come back, we'll count down two of our biggest classics, the Indian 1000 guineas and the Casino Royale sponsored 2000 guineas. That'll be right after this break. Welcome back to the Fly King Fisher winning post. It's time for us now to count down to two of the biggest races, the Indian 1000 guineas and the Casino Royale 2000 guineas.
the first of the Indian classics, the Radio Mirchi Indian 1000 Guineas Grade 1 will be run on Sunday the 11th of December 2011. 17 are left in the fray before the acceptances and the final number may stay around 12 to 15 runners. The field will be a set of tough and proven fillies vying for the attractive trophy and a rich purse amounting to over 5.5 million rupees. A look at their past performances and their current form and what their masters say is in right earnest. Classic training is done from the word go and you have a sustained build up to the race. If there are any hitches in between, it doesn't help much. So you've got to have a clean preparation, you've got to have a injury free pe preparation. Only then can you have a go at it. Oh, she's had a very good preparation. I expect her to do really well, but um, this is a vintage crop. There are very good fillies. It'll be very competitive. Jewel and behind his running son, but Vittoria is a length and a half ahead of living the dream. Vittoria unbeaten in the last four start is well clear of living the dream. Then there's O Calcutta running. Black Magic Woman got a mile in Bangalore. A mile in Bangalore is not like a mile here. A mile is more testing here. There's a slight doubt that she might not get the trip. But Victoria will definitely get the trip. Turn bullet still on the fence is about half a length in front of Forest Flair coming up on the outside. A length and three quarters for the back close on the fence. There's Demonstrator. Then comes Khalifi and Black Magic Woman looking for room in the middle with about 400 meters more to run. Bullet still ahead about half a length in front of Forest Flair putting up a nice run on the outside. And these were about two and a half lengths in front of Khalifi. Then there's Demonstrator and Black Magic Woman now getting the opening she was looking for with about 200 meters more to run. Forest Flair is about length in front of Black Magic Woman coming up fast on the outside and Khalifi too right on the tail with about 100 meters more to run and it's uh, Black Magic Woman on the outside and Forest Flare. Black Magic Woman just about wins it from Forest Flare. and there's Khalifi followed by Demonstrator and Bullet together as they race past the finish. A cracker of a finish here. She just ran 10 days ago in a six furlong race where she finished fourth and I've just kept her fresh to run in the guineas just to do her work basically. Class part uh, is basically just a base set of her smashing in the race. She's not much of a chance, but I think the Thousand Guineas are a very, very competitive open race. Round the turn and into the street, check her out on the inside, and in comes in on first. Hostly chased by Orito in second place. Oriental Charm is making a forward move on the outside, on the way they're beyond start. But it is Orito in the centre. Oriental Charm is galloping up on the outside, in third there is beyond start. But Orito on the inside, in half a length up on the outside, there is the Oriental Charm. It's Orito from Oriental Charm. It's Orito from Oriental Charm. Orito is about a length and a quarter ahead of Oriental. Oriental Charm is on the outside. Orito from Oriental Charm. Orito is going to hold on from a beyond stars then there's the oriental charm class apart last of five check her out the reason i'm running her is uh, one to see that whether she gets the mile and secondly the owner would love to see his colors it's every owner's ambition to run a classic one day so we said let's run and see 800 meter marker very close behind is uh, scarlet pimple and now making a forward with more length of the three got a behind there is a cream kiss on the inside and either suki suki is up on the outside as they pass the 600 meter marker two and a half men behind second last day arabian fighter close last day destined to glory as a turn for home Round the turn and into the street, uh, Celsius who comes in on first, being chased there by Ocean Turn, making a forward move in second place, two lane behind this uh, Scarlet Pimple over with B-Clone on the outside on the way, there's Suki Suki, but it is Ocean Turn on the end settling, a length and a half ahead of uh, Scarlet Pimple galloping strongly up on the outside in third, there is uh, B-Clone, but it is going to be Scarlet Pimple on the outside, on the way, there is Ocean Turn, Scarlet Pimple is about three quarters of a length ahead of Ocean Turn and destined to glory. Scarlet Pimpernel now going away from Ocean Turn and is destined to glory. Queen's Kiss, Suki, Suki, Celsius, Arabian Fighter, Be Cool. Star Glory, second last, way behind, last of all their prints. All good classic fillies. We'll know on Sunday. We'll see how she goes. I think she should get the mile. She started her career in Pune. She's done well. We've kept her to a sprint. We ran her um, a seven for long in the Mumbai season as her first start. I don't think the track was... Uh, what it should have been. Considering all the circumstances in which she ran, uh, I think she put up a good show. She carried top weight, she clocked a smart time for the day. I, don't, I thought she put up a good show. Let's see how she goes. Esmeralda smashing neck in front of Esmeralda. Smashing is about half a length ahead of Esmeralda. Smashing making it three in a row from Esmeralda. Then there's Caprioli, Star Prince, Golden Heart, second last, last to fall there, Star Treasure. 
did have some exciting moments, also some anxiety there. Uh, smashing took a while to. Uh, she was at her peak form uh, last Bombay. She's won the mile, Manjri mile, very well. And uh, in Pune, she didn't enjoy the weather much, uh, but still she put in a fantastic performance with Cardinal. And in the derby, I think the previous day rains uh, got to the filly. She came to Bombay, she was badly interfered in her lead up, uh, but she's bounced back to her best, uh, and I'm. Uh, very positive that she'll put in a fantastic run. Hunting Fantasy is beginning to make a quick forward move on the outside area and fallen back and forth. But it is Lake Paradise in the centre as the leader. Challenging up on the outside there is Haunting Fantasy. It's Lake Paradise from Haunting Fantasy. It's Lake Paradise from Haunting Fantasy. Lake Paradise from Haunting Fantasy. Lake Paradise kicking on gamely with Haunting Fantasy being switched on the inside. Lake Paradise is the winner from Haunting Fantasy. Arian third, last of four. She's had a mock race. It's good mock race. Um, I thought she went well. So I think she'll run a good race. Towards the 800 meter marker now is Snowblaze about a length and a half in front of Alma Meta on the far side. Towards the race there is Esmeraldo. A length and a quarter further back is Silk Cut. A gap about two lengths further back there is uh, Star Prince towards the inside is on the outside there Silver Screen. A length and a half further back there is Starfall. Then comes Cool Cat two lengths away. Four lengths behind a bad last now is Tell Me More as they begin to negotiate the home turn. At the turn now, Snowblaze still about half a length in front of Alma Mater coming up nicely on the outside. Towards the race there is uh, Esmeraldo. Then comes Silcut also making his presence felt on the outside with about 300 meters motor run. Then Alma Mater goes ahead a length and a half in front of Silcut trying hard to catch up and getting closer there. Snowblaze and others are far behind. Star Prince under the streak with about 150 meters motor run. The Alma Mater is about two lengths in front of Silcut and going further away. Alma Mater is about two and a half lengths in front of Silcut. Alma Mater wins this one from Silk Cut finishing up second. Then there's Star Prince, Cool Cat, Star Fall. After that, there is Snow Blaze, Silver Screen. Second. Well, she's certainly fitter from her last run. Uh, she went down to a really good filly. So I think she'll put up a very good show. And it's Celine with Dream on the outside. It goes just ahead of Moonflower towards the inside. There's Shane Cats coming with a big run on the outside. Then there's Botswana with about 200 meters more to run. It's Moonflower towards the inside. There's from uh, Shane Cats and Botswana coming up on the outside. Link the Dream with them with about 150 meters more to run there. And it's Shane Cats on the outside from Moonflower. Shane Cats from Moonflower and Botswana coming up with a late finish. It's Shane Cats from Botswana. Length between them. Shane Cats and Botswana. Shane Cats holding on. Shane Cats wins it from Botswana. Latest from the RWITC, the 96th annual general body meeting was held at the Mahalakshmi race course. Mr. Vivek Jain, the current chairman, yet again garnered the highest votes reaping 908 out of the possible 1,111 valid votes. Mr. Vivek Jain will continue to be at the helm of the RWITC. Mr. K. and Dhanji Boy outpolled sitting committee member Gautam Lala and that was the only change in the managing committee. Mr. Vivek Jain spoke about the year ahead after elections. Obviously it is very satisfying because it shows that the members appreciate the work done. I know how difficult and how tiring it is day after day, continuously. And it has really been a very tough job. And I tried to be participative, I tried to communicate with the members directly and otherwise and I think members appreciate that you're accessible and listen to them. Plus the hard work and it, it indeed is satisfying that it's recognized by the result. Well we have we have more than a full plate. It's, it's going to be a far more difficult year than the year that went by. The principal issue is the betting tax which is going to confront us. We must try and get relief in the budget. We have the license to race which has not yet come. We have the litigation with BGRs, we have the litigation with the army in Pune. So we have the issues of the income tax litigation. So there's a, we are beset with litigation. Uh, we have the lease coming up for renewal just one year away. So we have to work to make that happen. Plus everything else, marketing, media, of course, we're doing well. But that is also a very time consuming activity. I do realize that it's, it's a very difficult balance to not do anything and do too much. The problem is it's very easy to do nothing, have eight races a day. You're going to have thinning attendance and no interest in the media. Uh, I do agree that some members are getting perturbed by performances in the paddock. To some extent they are right because it does disturb the flow of the program. 
So we will try and move that outside, but one also must recognize that the shows in the paddock are greatly appreciated by the public enclosure. Not all of them have access to watch such shows, to watch such models, to watch some stars. And I think we need to draw a balance, but taking a cue from what people are expressing, uh, we'll try and moderate that, but I don't think we'll do away with it because that's what's attracting the bus to the rescues. Mr. Dhanji Boy is a new member, so I don't. I think he'll be a useful asset because he has uh, been a past chairman for five years. He's a very hands-on person on racing, uh, and I think it'll be good to have him. And the rest of us are the same. Last year, the, there was no amount of politics. We worked brilliantly. Uh, there was great give and take. So I, I see that a great the level of rapport only being maintained. Well, that's all we have on this episode of the Black Eagle Fisherman Post. As always, thank you for joining me. We will bring you the 1,000 guineas on our next episode and continue with our 2,000 guineas. What's sponsored by Casino Royale? Till I see you, as always, may the horse be with you. Fisher Winning Post is powered by the Serum Institute of India and Hirko Industries.